What do you mean the house isn't going to be vacant at closing? Hi, everybody. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors and director of the Real Estate Academy of America. And today's contract tip has to do with a purchase and sale agreement for a property when there is a tenant in possession of the property. What do you do if you're representing the buyer? What do you do if you're representing the seller? And what happens if the tenant doesn't vacate the house at closing? So let's back up a little bit. So first of all, if you are a, an agent representing a buyer and you show a property and there is somebody living there, first thing to do would be to ask the listing agent if the person who's actually living in the property is the owner or not the owner. If it is not the owner, then you would want, as the buyer's agent, uh, a copy of a lease to find out if it is a tenant, when is the lease up, when is the tenant supposed to be out, so forth and so on. If you are a listing agent and you are representing a seller who has their house rented out or <laughs> somebody staying at their house, not necessarily on a lease, but has full possession, has been living at the house, let's say a family member, or something along those lines, um, and the seller is selling the house, you need to have this discussion with the seller. So let's fast forward to you get a binding contract on a property with somebody living in the house who is not the owner, and you find out that that tenant, that person occupying the house, is not going to leave the house as of closing date, and the contract states that the seller will convey the property vacant, uh, free, and clear, free and clear of trash and debris and all personal property. What do you do? Who's responsible? Do you close? If you don't close, who's in default? So forth and so on. So a couple of things at play here. Number one is a couple of contracts. Obviously, the purchase and sale contract. And if you've ever been in any of my classes, you've always heard me say that the contract is the instructions. So let's look at the contract and see what the instructions say. So let's look at that first. So in the GAR purchase and sale agreement, um, it does clearly state in a paragraph B1 under the purchase and sale agreement that the seller warrants at time of closing, the seller will convey, and then it goes on and it talks about good and marketable title with limited warranty deeds subject only to zoning, general utility, sewer, and drainage easements uh, uh, that are on record as of the binding agreement date um, and upon which improvements other than the driveway don't encroach. Uh, any CCNRs, any condominium declarations, covenants, and restrictions of record as of the binding agreement date. At time of closing, the seller also warrants leases and other encumbrances specified in this agreement. Then it goes on to say, buyer agrees to assume seller's responsibilities in any leases specified in this agreement. Additionally, the seller's property disclosure exhibit, GAR F301, uh, <laughs> under paragraph uh, C, C1C, it does state, is the property or any portion thereof leased? And if a seller is using the abbreviated property, property disclosure statement, F302, the seller's disclosure of latent defects and fixtures, it does have uh, paragraph one is about occupancy. Seller occupies or is most recent occupant. Seller was not the most recent occupant or seller has never occupied. So you will know, you should know when you're showing the property, if somebody's living there, uh, you need to find out if that is the seller. If it's not the seller, is there a lease? Um, and if the lease is specified in the contract, whether that be in a special stipulation or referenced in uh, the seller's property disclosure statement, 
You buyer's agents, you're going to want a copy of that lease. You're going to want to find out. You might be representing a, a um, an investor who wants uh, who wants a property, an investment property with a tenant already there. So you'll definitely want a copy of the lease. You'll want to make plans for the current owner to transfer the security deposit, so forth and so on. If your buyer is looking for an owner-occupant property and there's somebody living there, then same thing. You'll want to uh, have a copy of the lease to find out when the tenant's going to be vacated, so forth and so on. If somebody's living in the property and there is no lease, then we have to, well, if there is a lease, the other document we need to look at is the lease and let's see what the terms of the lease say when's the expiration date of the lease is there a provision for an early termination um, is the tenant on a month-to-month -month situation uh, is it a tenant at sufferance living there without a lease so forth and so on um, in absence of a let's say the tenant is there or somebody is living there on a month-to-month -month lease or tenant at sufferance then <laughs> we have to look at the Georgia landlord tenant laws and see what's going on there. And generally speaking, if it is a person living in a property on a month to month lease or as a tenant um, at, uh, on a month to month lease, the landlord slash owner must give that tenant a 60 day notice to vacate the property. Um, and then if it is a tenant at sufferance, then you can start eviction proceedings. So backing that all back to a purchase and sale agreement. If there's a purchase and sale agreement, somebody living in the house, there is no reference to a lease either in the purchase and sale agreement between the buyer and the seller, either by virtue of a special stipulation or referenced in uh, uh, the seller's property disclosure statement, so forth and so on, then it is the seller's responsibility to make sure that property is vacant at time of closing or possession, whatever the, the contract states. If not, and there's no closing, uh, more than likely that would be construed as a seller default. Now, if the lease is specified in the actual uh, purchase and sale agreement and uh, the the um, uh, tenant does not vacate the property at the uh, at the time of closing of the property then the buyer would be required to close on the property and then the dis the buyer is responsible by the contract to assume the landlord's position with respect to the lease. So if the lease hasn't yet expired, the buyer now has a tenant in place. And if it is on a month to month basis, the tenant needs to vacate or the buyer who is now the owner would have to uh, send the notice and go through with the eviction proceedings if the tenant doesn't willingly vacate. What do you do in, in those situations? Well, uh, first of all, you need to try to find out what's going on if somebody is living in a property. If the buyer is buying the property as an owner-occupant, you absolutely need to get the lender involved um, because there are lending guidelines for a buyer getting a property uh, with the intent, uh, owner, getting an owner-occupied mortgage with the intent to occupy the property within 60 days. So. There is a lot going on. You can always extend the purchase and sale agreement. Uh, perhaps you can offer if it is a tenant at sufferance uh, rather than going through with, um, you could try to negotiate with the tenant cash for keys or something along those lines. So there are a lot of opportunities to try and work with this situation. But the point of this video is if you are contracting for a property and somebody is obviously living there, number one, is that the owner of the property? Number two, if it is a tenant, is there a lease? What are the terms of the lease? Will that tenant vacate? What do you do if the tenant vacates? Who's obligated to close on the property? If you do close on the property, whose responsibility is it to deal with the tenant? If you don't close on the property, who's at default? 
those are the issues that you need to address and look into when contracting for a property with a person living there. Stay tuned. I will do another video, a separate video on the temporary occupancy agreement for a seller who stays in the property after closing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors and director of the Real Estate Academy of America, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education. Bye. If you like that video, check out the one here. If you like the content on this entire channel, please click here to subscribe. I try to take even the most complicated of real estate situations and make them crystal clear. See what I did there? Real estate made crystal clear. Thank you guys so much for watching.